Good afternoon and welcome to Johnson Gillespie Court at the Doc Wysocki Gymnasium inside the Wilmore Center on the Ripon College campus. We get set to bring you Ripon College men's basketball this afternoon along with our executive producer and camera operator Riley Eisnagel, Martin Ernster, I'm Jason Mansmith tonight, I should say this afternoon, a matchup as the Ripon College Red Hawks host the Cornell Iowa I just blanked on it for a second there. Rams. <laughs> Rams, there we go. It's right on the scoreboard. <laughs> Can't see it. Let me tell you this, Cornell 10-5 and five on this season, 5-1 and one in the Midwest Conference. The Red Hawks uh, coming in 10-7 and seven on the season and 6-2 and two in the MWC. Uh, Marty, just a quick comment before we get into the coaches. So what do you say about today? Yeah, real simple. Second place Rippon with a chance to uh, beat Cornell and tie for first place in the league. And the key, watch the rebounding on both ends. Sounds like a plan. Marty had a chance to uh, talk to Ripon head coach Ryan Kane. We'll hear from him in just a matter of moments. You're watching Ripon College Red Hawk basketball on Midwest Conference Television and the Ripon Channel. Joining me right now is athletic director and head coach of the Ripon men's basketball program, Ryan Kane. Hi, coach. Hey, how are you doing, Marty? Well, I'm doing well. Now, uh, let's, get, let's jump right into it. Sure. You, you had to go and do it, coach. All of a sudden, it's a six-team horse race. We got 23 days left of, of action. Yeah. We're going to have some teams in this Midwest Conference playing as few as six games and others playing as many as 10 games. Yeah. Um, the one thing I'll mention to you, Illinois College, from a week ago today to the 15th of February, has an eight-game schedule of which they'll have only one road game. Okay. So uh, isn't I just thought I'd throw that out there just to let the viewers know just how awkward everything's are right now. Yeah. Don't given the uh, postponed games. Yeah. So we got a six-team horse race. Cornell comes in today in first place. Mm -hmm. They stub their toe against the same team you did, mm -hmm. and at Illinois College Wednesday evening. They don't want to lose two in a row. I dare say, Coach, the last time. Ripon College men lost three games. I'll bet you milk was a dollar nineteen a gallon. Yeah, and you probably and gas had to be about and, the same. Or? And you probably had to be in by dark. Yeah, yeah, you're probably not wrong there. It, it has been a while, um, and certainly, you know, we're 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 not in a space where we're trying not to lose three in a row. I mean, I, I think this is a great opportunity for our program, and um, you know, we're in a space that we wanted to be in. You know, uh, playing a, a a game here in late January for first place in the conference and. Um, and that's and that's where we anticipated on being and whether or not we're where we thought we would be doesn't really matter you got to accept kind of where we are and, and, be, and be present here in this moment today and, and do it and and uh, and and you know the the circumstances around COVID are, are challenging no, no question but everybody's got to do it yep. and uh, you know COVID is the only thing that continues to keep winning here uh, it seems <laughs> like at every turn but uh, but we'll do our best to manage it I'm yeah. sure. let me ask you this in today's contest with the Rams Tell me one thing about the Rams that you are going to be, or t even two, that when I'm sitting up there watching this game today and talking mm -hmm. about it, mm -hmm. um, is it going to, what, what do I look for to see if you're where you want to be with your club? Yeah, I would say, you know, one is they're big. You know, they, I see they, that. They, they, they start a big lineup, they got some nice sized guards that come off the bench. So, um, you know, we're going to have to manage, you know, the painted area for sure, you know, the ability to, Keep them out of that space because they're very good in there. Their guards are good in there. And okay. then, you know, we're going to have to make sure we're taking care of the glass as well. They've got some guys that can um, they play with great energy. they got good size so they can go get some of their misses. So we'll have to do a good job like we do, but we have to do all the time, right? I mean, some of those things are non-negotiable, right? You know, playing solid defense, you know, taking care of the paint and rebounding the ball. That travels. Yeah, and that travels uh, regardless of the, uh, the, the stress of the game, you know, mm -hmm. the pressure of whatever, you know, first place game or playing the last place game you, you, you got to bring all of that yeah. stuff every game and so yeah. that that stuff won't change for us today um, but yeah we'll have to do that and uh, you know they've got a great deal of experience too they got some guy they got a fifth year guy who's all conference player in Cabela who you know will be a, a, has always been a tough matchup for not just us but everybody in the league yeah um, and you know they've got some other very veteran guys that that are hungry you know to do it's it. a good conference I mean last time we spoke it was Sindel with Lawrence yeah this you know just said I'll, I'll take I'll put up 38 today. yeah yeah so so uh, you guys are going to play today, and then you're going to be home against uh, Beloit on Tuesday, another one of those, I think, unscheduled games, if memory serves me. Well, we, we, no, we're good now. That I think was. the only one that we are going to make up will be the Friday uh, against uh, Monmouth. I think it's the February 18th, 18th team. Yeah, other than that, everything should move. You know. Okay. All things, it should be moving uh, as our schedule. It, you know, I don't think we have any canceled or postponed games that we've okay. got to make up now. Oh, and just in case you didn't know, 
uh, last Friday you drove to Grinnell. Yeah. And then sat, and then that night you drove to Jacksonville, Illinois. That's right. And then drove and all the way back and watched the Packers lose. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Well, about 980 miles, Coach. I just is that what it is? Yeah. I yeah. Just I felt every one of them. I'm not going to lie. I okay. Was, I was pretty gassed on Monday. Best of luck to you. Thank you. I'm looking Appreciate forward it. to a very, very important game, very yeah. entertaining game as will the women's game be later. Mm -hmm. And like you said, I think it's going to come down to who controls the paint. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Let's hope, uh, let's hope it's the Red Hawks, right? Okay. <laughs> okay, thanks, thanks Marty. Thanks for your time. Yeah, you bet. Welcome back to Johnson Gillespie Court as we get set for this matchup. Rippon versus Cornell here on this Saturday afternoon. Glad to have you along. We'll bring you the action in the starting lineups coming up here in just a matter of moments. It's alumni day also here at the uh, gymnasium, had a couple of earlier games, the men's game and the women's game. And right now we'll step away for a couple of announcements in the playing of our national anthem and back with the starting lineup and the tip off here in just a few moments. After the national anthem, let's take a look at your starting lineups as we get set for the tip-off here on this Saturday afternoon. Let's start first with the Cornell Rams. They'll start number three, Logan Christensen, a six-foot-one-inch sophomore from Bloomington, Illinois. Number four, Marcus Quirk, a six-foot-six-inch senior forward from Edinburgh, Scotland. Number 15, Jordan Oyani, the six-foot-one-inch senior from Mount Pleasant, Iowa. Number 33, Cooper Kabbalah, number six, uh, six foot five and senior from West Branch, Iowa. And number 34, Daniel Burford, a uh, six three senior from Bolingbrook, Illinois. Under the head coaching direction of Dave Schlaubaugh, those are the Cornell Rams. Now look at your starting lineup for the Ripon College Red Hawks. Number one, a six foot junior guard from St. Cloud, Wisconsin, Ryan Steffes. Number 13, a six-foot junior guard from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, Drew Jorgensen. Number 22, a five-foot ten-inch sophomore from Chicago, Illinois, Dominic Galati. Number 42, a six-foot nine-inch junior center from Appleton, Wisconsin, David DeVolk. And number 50, a six-foot four-inch junior forward from Waupon, Owen Tooney. Under the head coaching direction of Ryan Kane in his 10th season, those are the Ripon College Red Hawks. Marty? I know you got a lot of notes on this one, a lot of things to talk about. What do you want to start with? Well, Rippon, you can never account for shooting. On that two-game losing streak in conference, a 7-0 Rippon that went to 7-2 overnight last weekend, they didn't shoot well. You can't control that. But what Coach talked about in the pregame, for those of you that had a chance to tune in, I think the big thing is going to, they got good size. And so where Rippon normally has the size advantage with David DeVolk and Owen Tooney, that is going to be at best, they're going to nullify one another, I think. But it's going to be who controls the rebounds, I think, who controls the boards. You've got to keep Cornell one and done on offense and, and do your job on the other end. So I'm looking for a heck of a ball game here. 
and Ripon's going to be have to play at their best to get a win. Both teams coming off of losses on their last outings. They don't want to lose another one. The schedule for Cornell gets a little bit interesting here the next few weeks for them, but a lot of home cooking from what you said. Yeah. Yeah, and in fact, uh, starting uh, after today, effective new month, the February 1st, they get Grinnell at home, they get Monmouth at home, they got a hiccup at Knox, but then they get Knox and Rippon and Lawrence at home. So, yes, indeed. So the introductions just wrapping up here from public address announcer Linda Krause. It is also uh, Sneakers Week, in case you didn't know, versus for the uh, <laughs> Coaches versus Cancer uh, yeah. organization. So both yep. coaches uh, wearing their sneakers today. Yep. You Marty, know, Marty, sometimes you're I don't even, the wing sometimes, tips. Let's uh, yeah, let's yeah. Some, did I, get the memo, dude? Yeah, no, I did not get the memo. We're out of paper. I couldn't print it out, and so I, so not, none to me. I'll. Uh, I'll pay more attention to that. But nowadays, guys are wearing, if you ever watch ESPN, they're wearing Snickers all the time yeah, anyway. Yeah, Snickers. Yeah, yeah, Snickers. Tip is controlled by the Hawks. Galati in the backcourt. Ripping in the home whites with the red trim. Cornell in the road purples with the white numbers. Galati will run the point and find Tooney on the top wing. Over to the right side, Steffes. Cross courts it back over to Jorgensen. Fake the three into Tooney. Down at that power forward. Tooney will work his way in. Now kick back out top. Kalati on the three-pointer. That will miss back iron. No good. Rebounded out from Quirk. Christensen dribbles through the legs, working against Kalati to the right side on the handoff. Back up between the wheels. They'll work it to Magnani. Three-pointer on the way. Left-hand attempt. No good. That'll come down. Steffes will pull it across the 47-foot line. He'll run. A little bit of a hitch there, no foul. Three yeah. point, I should say, no uh, traveling call. Three pointer from Tooney is no good. Ran down on the rebound yeah. from DeVolk. Steph is quick fire. Jorgensen on the reload. That'll miss front iron. DeVolk again picks up the change. He'll muscle up, get that one to go down. Well, there's two offensive rebounds. We talked about that. That's a huge, nice uh, plus for Rippin. Anyani to the corner. Here's Quirk for three. That'll miss. Tooney on the pull and the hand back, and the Red Hawks will run. Galati loses the dribble. Ball on the ground. DeVolk will sit on it. Yeah, they're going to have to call a foul on DeVolk having a cup of coffee sitting on the park bench. 2-0 <laughs> right. so, lead here for the Hawks early. Yeah, Galati, uh, that, given that exception, he started about the last four or five games. Very strong with the ball, not to mention it's just an added bonus, a good three-point shooter. Anyani looking for the screen. Instead takes it left side of the pipe, puts it up himself too hard, rebounded out by Tooney. Here come the Red Hawks on the run. Dom on the shake to the left. DeVolk around the wing over to Tooney. Now the hand back off to Jorgensen, who's on the right wing. He'll take it baseline. Fire back out on top. Good defense by the Rams. Yeah, very pesty, getting their hands in, challenging everything. DeVolk this time runs out of room. They'll double team at the baseline. There's got to be somebody open then, right? Jorgensen's going to run it down. Got four on the shot clock. Drew turns around, gets tipped. Magnani picks wow. it. He'll look to run. Red Hawks get back on defense. Not quick enough. Baskets up and good for Kabbalah. Great theft, beautiful transition by the, by the Rams. Tied at 2, 17-38 remaining. Rams are challenging everything. Every dribble, every pass. DeVolk baseline spin, left finish, no good. Gets his own rebound. He'll muscle up again. Can't get it. That one's too hard. Yep. Christensen on the run out. Here come the Rams. Christensen picked Tooney on the ground with it. Great theft. Big, big fella goes to the floor. Galati will walk it across the timeline and get set. Three minutes gone here in the first half. Tied at two. DeVolk around to the edge. Galati. Jorgensen. He'll throw back Dom. A little bit of a mismatch. Shot on the way put up. Three. Jorgensen. That won't go. Tipped around. Comes down. Quirk will fire ahead to Christensen in the hand back. Kabbalah over to Quirk on the left side from the touch from Christensen. 
Work will work his way around. DeVolk is there. Good wow. defense by lot Tooney. A lot of action, not a lot of scoring. Jorgensen, DeVolk. 16-20 remaining in the first half. Tied at two. Kalani on the head fake. We'll go back to David. Galati will hoist the three. That one's good. That's that added bonus. Not only being strong with the ball, but a shooter. Jorgensen for Rippon is the guy that's been in a funk for a while. We got to see him get hot on the three-point line. Magnani looks to the right side. Going to set up. Shot for three is good. Nobody scores for a couple of minutes, and then back-to-back -back threes. I think I said Daniel Burford was the start. I actually meant 44. Logan Sharp. Yeah, yeah. And I apologies on that. Tied at five here, 15-40. Yeah, Logan's family was very disappointed. I can tell. I got the message already. <laughs> so, just kidding. Jorgensen on the catch to the right side. DeVolk will work at baseline. He's under eight on the shot clock. Finds Tooney right there. Puts it up and good. Good find. Great movement down the baseline on the weak side by Tooney. Well, they're, they're crashing DeVolk every time. They're double teaming him up. So if Tooney's going to be wide open, you might as well take the shot, right? Yeah. Right side shot on the way. Speaking of it, Kabbala for three. And boy, have the Rams been packing the paint down here on the other end. Rams take their first lead of the ball game, 8-7. Got a host of players at the scores table ready to check in here. Five minutes and change gone in the first half. DeVolk pushes over to Galati again for a three. That'll go oh. in and out, man. That was, you, you called it. Sharp on the rebound and ahead, they'll work it. Kabbalah hands off Magnani. Quick into the corner. That's Quirk. Back to Christensen around the pipe, they'll work. Sharp off the glass over the top of DeVolk. Easy two, 10-7. So the first, first little run done by the visitors. Steffes. Quick action around the outside, inside to DeVolk now. DeVolk back out to Steffes. Three, good! Three-point basket, Ryan Steffes. I like Rippon's patience in the half-court offense. They are not forcing anything. They're pretty much all good shots. Tied at 10, 13, 50. Quirk will come through on the head fake over Jorgensen, puts it up good. Good body control by Quirk. Marcus Quirk, 12-10. This Ram team, 15.9 from Kabbala, 15.5 from Magnani. Here's DeVolk on the shot up, no good. Foot on the line, yeah. Oh, that's too bad. Then good effort. Quirk comes in with 14 points. So you got three of your, three of your top scores averaging right around 14, 15. Not too bad. I sometimes wonder, my friend, uh, with the big around the glass, always trying to finesse it and drop it in over the, over the rim versus be a little more aggressive with your shot and use the glass. Easier said than done. I'm up here. Mahone checks in, so does Meinholz for the Red Hawks, and it looks like also Bartle for Rippin as well. Justin Bartle checking in, and one more in there as well. Kay Tackler, did he come in? Yep, Kay Tackmeyer in as oh, well. I'm sorry. Yeah, the freshman from Peshtigo. Ball goes out of bounds. Rippin basketball. In fact, um, Tackmeyer was the original starting guard this season. Then he blew his ankle going into the lacrosse game. Tackmeyer looks over, hands it over to Steffes. Bartle around the top over to Mahone. Jalen on the dribble. Back out the work, Meinholz. Tackmeyer, baseline, got, run, got a throw out top and finds Mahone with five on the shot clock. Sure, give him the mid-range. No good, rebounded out. Nice rebound by the Hawks. Meinholz will go, he's got three in front of him. He'll kick back out. Bartle spinning in the paint, too hard off the glass. Yeah, he good got idea. a little confusion there, though. Yeah. Left side kick will get you those changes for Cornell's. We'll work it around here. Kabbala looking up top, 22, Jaden Meeker. 
Moving inside. Shot for three is good yeah. for Magnani. Five point lead opening up for the Rams. Hand off to Steffes, over to Bartle. Tackmeyer now. Mahone trying to get some kind of separation. We'll throw back to Luke. Cade will go baseline with it. Foot slips a little bit. Back out. Another four on the shot clock. Steffes has got to put one up. That won't go. Tackmeyer with the pull. Fights for it. Finds Bartle. Bartle again goes up. This time can't get it to go. Gets his own rebound. Fights out one more time. Goes up left handed. Wow. Makes that one go. Somebody in Berlin's feeling good. 15 12. Red Hawks trail by 3 11 11. Walk. And a traveling violation called. By the way, this officiating crew is, in my opinion, the best in the conference. Isaac Mackey called on the travel. Zach Engel into the ball game now for the Rams. 15-12, 11-09. Meinholz into Tackmeyer. Luke will look to go left. Comes through the middle of the lane. No good. Man, they're collapsing on that quick. Basket put up. Throw back out. Steffes for the three and the clear. No. Offensive rebounds, though, ripping, dominating. Steffes will rip it away. Meinholz had some room. Now he'll go. Nice move underneath and finish. Oh. I, always, I always say he does not play like a freshman. The O'Connor walk. 15-14, Rams leading 10-30. Drive back out. Fire to the edge. Now Red Hawks work them down to under 10 on the shot. Three pointers put up, no good. Rebounded out. Tack line. Meinholz going to get fouled. Rippins climbing back into this. I say climbing back. They've been trailing with four of the starters on the bench. Rippin just six of 20. Yeah. For 30%. Meanwhile, Cornell, 6 of 11 for 55%. Yep, they're knocking down some threes, Cornell. That's been the difference of the game. But I like the way, in terms of offensive rebounds, Rippon is attacking the glass. Julian Cleary checking in for the Rams. Jorgensen back in, steps in from 17, no good. Rebounded out. Nice job by the Rams. They'll push the other way. Meeker on the dribble. Working Tackmeyer. 9.52, 15-14. Hawks trail by one. Rippon's done a great job of keeping Cornell away from the rim. Meeker over to Cleary. Cleary going baseline against Jorgensen. He'll mid-range one. Left-handed, no good. Ball goes out of bounds off of Cornell. Logan of, Sharp. Yeah, off of Sharp. Yep. That's what he's calling. Yeah, the guy that's good, I mentioned it earlier, it'd be nice to see Jorgensen get untracked. He has just been in an offensive scoring uh, slump, and it'd be a great game for him to come out of it here. Well, he was out a few games and then uh, came back, and like you said, it's been a little bit of a, a slump yep. for him since then. Yep. Get a couple of threes, happens. and then momentum gets back to Yeah, it happens to all shooters. Yep. Mahone goes behind the back on the dribble, now looking for some help. Got a fire back out to Jorgensen. And again, Red Hawks will be under 10 on the shot clock. Back over to Jalen. Shot on the way. Good. That's his game. Uh, that's what he did to give him a chance to win at Illinois College last Sunday afternoon. They were down double digits. He shot him right back into a tie game. They just couldn't finish at the end. Meeker on the dribble will hand off to Sharp and head to the left. Cleary between the wheels over to the right side. 16-15 Hawks lead, 8-44. Five on the shot, shot put up is good that time from four quirk. Yeah, that breakdown with the dribble forced Tackmeyer to step up and leave his man, and his man is the one that was open and scored. 
Tackmeyer will work it, find Duvall, can back over to Jalen Mahone. Now to Meinholz up top. Jorgensen comes around, back to Duvall. Tackmeyer thought about three, nope. Jalen Mahone mid-range, 16, no good. Sharp on the pull, coming the other way. Quick touch pass, here comes Cleary going baseline. Good cover by Tackmeyer on the defense. Good recovery defensively by Rippin. Very prominent stop there. Mahone goes behind the back, loses the dribble, and will get fouled. Frustration foul after, after that pass being picked off by Mahone. The matchup on defense I like watching is uh, the freshman for Rippin, Mineholes, uh, guarding, uh, is it uh, Sharp? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tooney's going to come back in. Bartle's going to check back in. So go Lottie, Bartle, Mahone, Tooney, and Steffes on the floor for the Hawks. Yeah, we got size down on the block. Mahone will kick back over to the right side. Galati on the touch from Bartle. Mahone will get the screen back to Owen. 17-16. Rams lead by one. Good ball moving around. Mahone's got five on the clock and the put up. Good for three. You know, way to set the table because they could have shot the three, Steffes. But, you know, what the heck. Go to the hot hand. 19-17, Rippin leading by two, 7-17 remaining. Sharp, get a muscle up against Tooney. Yep. Too greedy into the cookie jar by right. Mahone. You know, Coach Kane, I think when he made those substitutions where he had four off the bench playing and they did a great job, two things happened. They did a great job and, and he can find out who's looking good today figure out his rotation. Sharp will get the inbounds from Yamanyani. Fire back out. Logan Christensen, spin move, good back. Shot on the way, Kabbala, good for three. I'll tell you, between Kabbala and Manyani, three pointers are flying. 11 points for Kabbala to lead all scorers today. Mahone, shake and bake at the free throw line, will kick back out. Find Galati, go over to Bartle. Griffin will set up, look for the game on the edge. Cornell not giving up absolutely anything easy defensively today. No, a today. little crowded in the lane, Mahone just found out. Mahone, a soft touch on this one, that's not gonna go. He didn't have anything else to go with though. Not everything was packed yeah. up. Yep, good defense by the Rams. Magnani will spread the floor just a little bit. Sharp will close it up. Yanni on the spin, comes through the lane, good move. Trying to get it out, ball goes out of bounds. Magnani thought he had Steffes off his hip. Bartle helps out, made him pull out, and then an errant pass. Good help by Bartle. Bartle checks out, DeVolk back in. And Galati will come back in. I should say over the timeline. Steffes gets a big screen from DeVolk there. And Mahone trying to feed down to Owen. Double close. Somebody makes it up there. Travel. Call travel, yeah. Little, took the little bunny hop. The little hop. He gathered himself with that little two foot. Uh, didn't look like much, but it was enough. Boy, do they collapse on the ball with a double as <laughs> soon as it makes an entry pass. The coach has made it clear he's not going to let Rippin beat him down at least if he can help it down low. Rippin's playing the same way. Logan Sharp handed it off, Kabbalah, and now we'll get a foul underneath. Who's it on? Is it on Sharp or is it on Tooney? Looks like Tooney. And the inbounds will come under the basket. Into Sharp, hand it right back. Magnani over to Kabbalah, now back to Sharp. Magnani between the wheels. Still the right a one-point game. Right. Shot on the way. No good. Rebounded out. Tooney with a quick toss ahead to Steffes. They got a little bit of a run. Yeah, but, boy, they get back. 
A hone this time, high to the finish. That'll go. Boy, they are getting away with pushes in the back. I saw it against Meinholz earlier with elbows on their back and no calls. But you can do it. Keep doing it if you're for now. 21-20. Red Hawks lead by one. Good defense. Galati again stepping up. That time, Quirks blocks from DeVolk. Put oh. it into the second row. And we got a shot blocker in the volleyball game. DeVolk. Whew. That's what I call good help. <laughs> I would say. 21 20, 447. In comes Meinholz again. Rippin Bench doing a great job of letting their teammates on the floor know when they're doing, playing really good defense. Kamala handed back out. Quirk goes left side. Five on the shot. Three from Christensen is good. Wow. Keep that hand up there. He's, he did. Yeah. Nice good. shot. It was. Galati across the timeline. He'll look over to Mahone. That gives him a two point lead. Shot. No good. DeVolk pulls the board back up with it and fouled. Cornell coach pleading for an. Foul on DeVolk over the back. Did not get it. It's going to be Mignani second, so he'll probably check out here. And DeVolk will hit the stripe. Free I can throw. hear the, sorry, I can hear the coach still letting the refs know. I can hear him get my headset up here. <laughs> Tackmeyer's going to come back in. Galati sits down, so is Mahone. What a game. I, this is what I thought it'd be. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, the women's game that follows, it's going to be the same thing. DeVolk, free throw, chance to tie, up and good. 23-23 with 4.23 remaining. <laughs> Coach still letting the ref know. <laughs> Love it. Sharp's got the basketball now. He'll look upside to Christensen. Meeker, he'll drive, stop, shot, no good. Rebounded out. Tackmeyer uh, comes away with it. Kept alive by DeVault to Tackmeyer. Tackmeyer will create some separation. Offensive. Yeah, they'll call the charge. Come on, stay within yourself. Yep. Playing too good to do that. Yep. He knows it. It was almost like he had a little bit too much separation between him yeah, and the players. Like, his I can get away with this. <laughs> My goodness, the first time I've seen the lane open. Aha. Right. Uh -huh. I can get away with this yeah. arm coming up. Yeah, uh, it was no. a trap. He was cut off in the canyon. <laughs> Tied at 23, 350 remaining here, first half. Marcus Quirk over to uh, Christensen. Rams will work it around. They'll be at seven on the shot clock. Quick in, Sharp puts it up, good feed. Well done, simple, the old ball screen, pick and roll. Tackmeyer up the court. Shot from Steffes for three, that'll miss. Oh, Tackmeyer set the table beautifully, just couldn't deliver. Meeker at the top. Good move. Throws inside to Sharp. Wasn't quite ready for it, but he found it. DeVault got a hand in. Ooh. Oh, kind of a late whistle. But they're going to call it on the reach on DeVault, I believe. Is that his second? That'll be his second. Yeah. Got to save him with less than three minutes left yeah. till half. Mahone comes in for the Hawks. DeVault really has had a nice game. Just to make it better, you just need to finish a little better. Meeker working against Mahone down the right side. Christensen now with Jorgensen on him. Bottom puts up the shot. Good. That was unstoppable. My goodness. Kabbalah on that. Jorgensen, he'll Ka work his way in. Kabbalah is tough customer. 27-23 lead now for the Rams. Meinholz. Steph is wide open three. That'll miss front iron. Got to go up and just shoot that. 
Red Hawks, three of 13 behind the arc. Yeah, they've been in a shooting slump. Both losses over the weekend. You can look at the scoring, not up to their standard. Minot's almost got a hand on that one low. Christensen. Yeah, he did. Couldn't reel it in. Five on the shot clock. Post up, sharp, left-handed finish. No good. Rebounded wow. out. He did everything right, except finish. Tuning on the catch to the right side. He'll look for the drive down low. Cross court over to Steffes. He'll come in this time. Jump stop. Wait for the rest of it. Get hammered. Oh. And foul. Nobody does it better on the Rippin' Redhawks of creating contact on the penetration dribble than Ryan Steffes. He's been one of the quiet players. I mean, you look at the two starting guards, Steffes and Jorgensen, not uh, up to that offensive uh, standard we're used to seeing. And um, Rippin needs to get that shooting slump, get up behind him, right. get it in the rear view mirror. And both of those players combined, two of 17. Well, there you go, and I'm not even looking at the numbers. Um, Mahone has been shooting, coming off the bench, shooting the ball very well of late. Steffes on that one is good. 27-25, Rams lead here, minute 35 remaining. They'll work around the outside perimeter. Meeker this time. Good defense by Rippin once again. Kabbalah in the corner, under 10 on the shot clock. I think I've said that about 100 times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Both teams shot on the way. Christensen's not going to draw net. Now, is he going to hold his hand up again on that shot, Christensen? <laughs> I think not. I, di I didn't <laughs> see that no, this I time. Don't, I don't think he's going to look at the Rippin bench either. <laughs> Comes with the territory, right? Mine holds, will bring it in to Steph. Is under a minute to go here in the first half. <laughs> Jorgensen down to Tooney. Tooney fire quick underneath. And Christensen. Possession arrow goes to the Rams. And mine, I should say that's uh, Trevor Boji. It was a good idea on the feed. The problem was the defender came across the face of the intended receiver for the, for the uh, Red Hawks. And no way did Rippon have a chance of coming up with that cleanly. About a 20-second difference between the shot clock and game clock. So Rippon will have another opportunity. Meeker, yeah, will carry it. Well, pesky defense by Mahone is rewarded. Rippon down by a deuce with exactly 40. 27-25, Steffes will get the inbound from Meinholz. Jorgensen running baseline, goes to the edge, stepped up for three. Ooh. Boy, that looked good, didn't it? Did, it though? Yeah, and that one's yeah. going to be out of bounds. Yep. That looked good. I thought when Drew came around on the baseline, he maybe got an extra step in there before he shot that. Yeah, you know, I always wonder, too, because is he actually positioning himself, shuffling the feet to get square to the rim prior to making contact with the ball or not? I have to look at slow-mo video. Very small separation between the shot clock and game clock right now. Yeah, half a second. Right. And the shot clock is ahead of the game clock. About a half a second, as Marty said. Boji, he'll go in, work up, put up the shot. Pretty good. finish. That'll do That'll do it for the half here. Cornell Rams, 29. The Ripon College Redhawks, 25. Uh, that first half took 27 minutes, which is kind of a rarity. Nine fouls called and not many free throws. No, in a well-played half. A uh, quick look at halftime statistics. We'll run them all for you here in just a little bit. Rippin College shooting 30%, uh, 9 of 30, and Cornell is shooting 48% at 12 of 25. So still within it, still pretty close. Rippin trailing 25-29. We'll take a break and come back in the second half in just a little bit. You're watching Rippin College Red Hawk basketball on Midwest Conference Television and the Rippin Channel. Welcome back to the Johnson Gillespie Court inside the Whiteski Gymnasium at the Wilmore Center. Let's take a look at those first time statistics for Rippin College. They are led by 
Chalen Mahone with seven, Ryan Steffes with five, four from David DeVolk, three from Dominic Galati, two from Justin Bartle, two from Luke Meinholz, two from Owen Tooney as the Red Hawks trail 29-25 here at halftime. On the other side, Cooper Kamala, 13 points to lead the Rams, and then four points for Marcus Quirk, three from Logan Christensen, three from Jordan Mignani, and also two from Trevor Boji for the Rams. Rip and shot 30%, nine of 30 in that first half. And uh, Cornell 12 of 25 for 48%. Uh, Cornell never went to the free throw line in the first half. And Rippon was four for four. Rebounds, Rippon 20, Cornell 14. Turnovers, both five apiece. You said it was going to be pretty even. Yeah, uh, to, you're thinking about your comment there uh, about the foul situation. Rippon's done a great job of keeping Cornell playing a perimeter game. But to Cornell's credit, they're knocking down shots. We got to see the two starting guards, Steffes and Jorgensen, at least one of them is going to have to start picking up some of the offensive load because 30% is not going to allow you to come out with a win. Inbound, Tooney will take it. Look to go through the lane a little bit. Blocked behind and no good. Rebound, it comes out. Sharp Christensen on the run. Kabbala. Back in and out to Magnani. Kabbalah's been the thorn in rip inside. Good crowd here today at the Wilmore Center. Run through on the edge. Here's Quirk for a deep three. That'll miss. Rebound to Volk will sky for it and get it off to Steffes. Steffes ready to attack. We'll throw back. Thony with the left three. That'll miss. Rebounded out by Christensen and the Rams will come the other way. Head to the north. Quirk working against Jorgensen. Good D. Yeah, Drew's giving up a few inches on that. Yeah, walled up nice. Magnani trying to drive it down. Will come back and put up a little soft touch. Halfway through the lane and good. Crafty move. Galani will spin it, go to the right side, hand it off to Jorgensen. Now back to Dom, over to Drew. Steffes on the left. He'll go baseline, no, gonna kick it down to Tooney. Five on the shot clock, gotta find somebody. Jorgensen's gonna have to chuck one. Gets him up in the air, puts it up, no good. Hit the rim, ball goes out of bounds. Good defense by the Rams, forced that bad shot. Thirty-one twenty-five. Red Hawks trail by six. Eighteen twelve remaining. Left edge work the Rams. Not of the right side. Christensen Galati right in front of him. Pick and roll ball screen. Yeah, nice move. Yeah, sharp. They did that to Rippin late in the first half on a nice same result. Galati quickly brings it up the court, finds DeVonk, left side edge over to Steffes. Gonna get a screen there? No. DeVonk will throw back to Steffes. Steffes will come through, go up, get it. That eight point margin is probably the biggest lead by Cornell in the game, I'm assuming. That it is, or it was. 33 27, 17 25. Yanni inside this time. Sharp will post up. Throw back out. Quirk for a three. Will miss everything. DeVault with a rebound. Sharp doing a good job for Cornell finding space down low. Kalani throws to Tooney. Back over to Jorgensen. Dom on the dribble. Step back. No. Hands it over to Drew. Jorgensen on the catch. Will square through. Come up. Off balance, man, can't get it to go. DeVault there, though, puts up the change, and good. Good bail there. So Jorgensen not hitting the threes, feeling confident, is trying to hit that mid-range. Meinholz and Mahone set to come in. 
Christensen, three, no good. Rebounded out, Steffes on the run. He'll take it all the way, put up the shot, no good, he'll get fouled. Talked about that earlier, nobody does it better, not only on the Red Hawks team, gotta be one of the tops in the conference for drawing contact, Ryan Steffes. Don't have the, the stat in front of me in terms of points in the paint from the Red Hawks in the first half, but not many. No. Well, shooting 30%, not a lot of points. <laughs> yeah. True it, story. It, it's, Nobody, is, nobody has stepped up and taken on that scoring load. Now, one guy that can do it just entered the game. That'd be number five for the Red Hawks, Jalen Mahone. Meinholz also checking in as Tooney will sit down. Meinholz, an all-around good player, very smart player, just a freshman. Free throw was good. Red Hawks within two. Trailed by as many as eight. Back at about the 17.57 mark, so in less than a... 90 seconds, they've done a nice job of whittling it down. Yanni will direct traffic. Boji runs the baseline. Got the mismatch. Meeker back over to Boji inside. Straight up sharp. Good defense there. Four on the shot clock. Cornell's going to have to make something. Kabbalah will miss it. And on the ground. They're going to call shot clock violation. Great job of getting a hand in Kabbalah's face. Is that Cornell taking the timeout? Cornell taking a timeout, a rare breed here yeah. in this game. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Up next for the Ripon College Red Hawks. Uh, after this game on February 1st, they'll be hoist, hosting Beloit at 5.30 p.m. And then at Lawrence next week, February the 5th at 1 p.m. Yeah. Then at Cornell on February 9th, and then at Monmouth on February 12th. Yeah, that'll be their uh, mini gauntlet at following the Beloit Tuesday game. So Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, uh, Lawrence, Cornell, Monmouth. So that'll probably have a lot to say about the outcome for the Red Hawks and where they're going to finish in the standings. But first things first, got to hold serve at home against the top competition. 33-31, Rams leading the Red Hawks. 15-52, DeVolk will get the ball in and find Dominic Kalani. Steffes on the catch on the wing. Here's Meinholz, he'll go up with it. That won't go, man. No, I don't know. Two losses by Rippon, not shooting well in either game, and that continues in this contest. Meeker will post up three in the corner, no good. Rebound pulled out of there by DeVolk. Coach Kane has to feel good about DeVolk's efforts today. Galati on the run, and he runs well. Meinholz stuffed underneath just a little bit too far, couldn't get the no-footer up. There's no better example of why Galati worked himself into a starting position than that, that sequence right there. Strong with the ball, breaking down the defense, calm under fire underneath the basket, found the open freshman from Oconomowoc for two. Meinholz will go to the free throw line to shoot two. First one on the way is good. 33-32, Hawks within one. And the other thing, I like seeing a scorer like Jalen Mahone also coming off the bench. Yeah. Particularly when you have a, a, a team that's struggling from the offensive side of things. Cade Tackmeyer comes in and Meinholz parries that free throw to tie this ball game up at 33. That'd be Jim Grabowski. Yeah. Old Packer, 33. 15-11. And a pickoff. Meinholz. Tackmeyer gives in. Steffes goes up with it. Can't get it to go. Fights for the rebound, and he'll get fouled. Steffes is not on. happy with himself that he didn't make that shot, but he fought yeah. hard to get the rebound. Yeah. Goes on number one, Bogey. Bogey. He'll take a seat, in fact. And in the ball game now, Zach Engel for the Rams. Tied at 33, 15-02. Tackmeyer set to inbounds. Finds Meinholz. There's Mahone. Catch and release. That won't go. Rebounded out. Oh. Meeker on the run. He'll try to feed one in there, and Steph has got a hand on it. Meeker yeah. will get it back. Wide open. Engel for a three. Good. Made him pay. Almost a theft by Steph as turns into a tray for Cornell. Tackmeyer on the walk up. Here's Meinholz, baseline stop. 
DeVolk, he'll take the 16 free. Good. Why not? Nobody else is hitting. 36-35, Cornell leading Rippon. Just don't make a habit of shooting out there, coach yeah. is thinking. Right. <laughs> Around the edge, they'll work inside, and Steffes. Ball goes out of bounds. Boy, you gotta like that moxie. I can't say enough about 34 mine holes. Tooney's gonna come back in. Give a well-deserved break to DeVolk. Cork back in for the Rams. Working around the outside edge. Engel working against Tackmeyer. Isaac Mackey also back in for the, the Rams. Focus on the bounds. line. We see that more and more in the game of basketball. Guys must be getting bigger, or their feet are getting bigger. <laughs> uh, you know, Tackmeyer, never, I, I was surprised to see a freshman start for coach early, early in the year. And he, it, but we never got a chance to see him play a lot. And then we, he blows his ankle and he misses a lot. Well, he's 6'4", plays good defense. Now I'm beginning to understand why. <laughs> you see why that makes the starting lineup? Yep. Steph is down to Tooney. Tooney will go baseline, two on him. He'll work her through and they'll get him on the hack on the arm from Ingle. They're calling those reaches very consistent. Talked about these officials being a really good unit of officials. Well, they've called four on the Rams and none on the Red Hawks. Oh, geez, I hope that's I hope that's not my my my, my bias coming through. <laughs> yeah, but. the broadcaster's jinx. Tony's gonna go in, get his own rebound. Not yeah, quite lost, sure what that was, well, but lost the dribble and then just picked it up calmly instead of trying to dribble. 37-36, Red Hawks lead by one. There's that defense by Tackmeyer. Engel on the jump stop, back out to Mignani. Steffes with the shadow defense. Wide open three, Meeker on the way. No good, rebounded out by Yeah, Mackey. sometimes those long rebounds off of long shots. Meeker to Engel, Mignani. He'll go baseline. Fire right across. There's Ingle again for three in the corner. That won't go. Rebound Steffes on the run. Steffes will go baseline with it. Wrap around. Curl on the oh. top and Tooney was to coming total, down. Yeah, total misread by Steffes on Tooney's move. Wide open in the corner. Meeker comes in and steps up. And I don't know. Could have took the three but didn't. Probably the right move. Yeah, dribbled into the, the defense. Mahone, he'll put up a little one and get it to go. Griffin improves on one of their rare leads of the game so far. Well, the last time they led by three was back at the 16-28 mark in the first half. Boy, you uh, got a great memory, Jason. Well, <laughs> technology helps on that one, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> right side, Magnani with it. He'll step in, put it up 15-footer. No good. Rebound comes out. Out of bounds off of Cornell. Yeah, boy, I like the way Magnani, his dribble relocate, he's very good at it. Missed it that time, but he's been effective with it throughout the game. Kabbalah back into the ball game, so is three Christensen. And DeVolk will come in, and Justin Bartle, I believe, as well. Yep, so Bartle, Tackmeyer, DeVolk, Steffes, and Mahone. Magnani, Christensen, Kabbalah, Sharp, and Quirk. All without looking at the roster. Hey, that's why you're doing play by play, <laughs> and I'm sitting here just going for the ride. Tackmeyer walks it up, finds Bartle on the left edge. Bartle had a good first half, yeah. by the way. Tackmeyer feeds one down low inside to Steffes. He'll work his way through. Fire over to Mahone. He'll come through. Oh, he traveled. Yeah, it looked awkward. I didn't think he actually did when he, he came down with the right foot and not dribble jump stop with both feet. Sometimes when things just look odd, gets a whistle. <laughs> yeah. Red Hawk bench getting into it. 39-36 lead for the Hawks. Cornell atop the division in Midwest Conference. Shot for three. That's the guy you can't leave open. And I'll guarantee you, Coach Kane talked about it, and he's shouting out there right now 
to the Ripon defender. That's the guy you cannot leave as an orphan. Cooper Kabbalah averaging 15 points per ball game. That tied the game up. He's got 16 today, Tackmeyer. Inside to DeVolk. DeVolk baseline, he'll fight for it, no good. Rebounded out of there by Tackmeyer. Six on the shot clock, five on the shot clock. DeVolk will help on up over the top, that won't go. Rebounded out, a couple of players hit the deck. Christensen slowly pulling himself up. Yeah, chance to take the lead here by the visitors. Magnani on the dribble. Cork at the top of the key, working against Tackmeyer. That's a good matchup. Yeah, and Tackmeyer's getting more floor time because of that. That one up and that one good. Beautiful runner. Yes. 41-39 with 10-39. Yeah, at the shot clock buzzer. Their coaching that. staff was looking for a little contact on that. They might have had a, a valid concern. Bartle over to Mahone this time. Tackmeyer will work his way down into DeVolk at the baseline. Yep. And Mahone will step up on the three. That'll miss. DeVolk on the pass. Pick up. Good. No. Rebounded again. Up top. Steph is three-pointer. That one's good. Well, instant replay. Shot at, at the shot clock. Maybe that'll take the lid off for Rippin. Time will tell. 42-41. Red Hawks lead. 9.50 remaining. Christensen this time in. Kamala no good. Rebound. Out of bounds off of the Red Hawks. Oh, a I think he missed that call. We're going to get a Coach Kane talking about something. I thought that was off of Cornell, actually. Meinholz into the ball game. So is Don Galati. What a game. Yeah. 42-41. Sharp will hand it off. Magnani. Between the wheels, Christensen back to Magnani on the right side edge. Quick feed inside, Sharp going up. Five seconds on the shot clock, too hard off the glass. The looking Volk. for a contact. Yeah, Sharp pleading with the ref. The Volk, once again, good defense. Galati will hand back off to Mahone over to the right side. There's Meinholz to Steffes. Steffes, baseline. Oh, Nowhere to go, got to go to back. You got to what? curl. Mahone yeah. needs to curl on that. The lane line was wide open. I don't know why he pulled up. And the over and back violation. Steffes was looking for him to do just that. Red Hawks still a little bit less than Stellar on the shooting. 15 of 47 for 32%. Yeah, yeah. And Jorgensen set to come back in. It's only the, the defense by Ripon that's keeping them in this because the execution by Cornell has been really good. And every time the ball gets down low to like, like the ball, it's an immediate double team because Ripon can't hit the perimeter shot, so they're going to let Ripon give that up. The rebound war currently being won by the Hawks, 34 to 21. And that one is going to be a foul. Oh, is he going to call basket? Is he going to call basket interference too? Yeah. Oh no, I thought that ball was on the way up. So they're going to call the foul and count the bucket. Correct. 43-42. So the official on the right baseline called the foul, which was the right call on Mahone. And then the official on the backside in front of the Cornell bench called the basket interference. Yeah. Just one toss here. That's good. In a game like this, big play. Yeah, 44-42, 857. Cornell has the lead again. DeVolk will find Galati. Mahone on it. DeVault trying something. Gonna go baseline. Fights over the top of three and got it to go. Well, that's a hungry lad. Because that's a very formidable defense right there. Ten points for David DeVault in this ball game. Jorgensen tripped a little bit as he was guarding Magnani. Yeah. He was able to recover. Yeah, because he got help from DeVault. Baseline, they'll go to the Rams. Kick back. Cobble off the window and good. Yeah, you can score anywhere. Beautiful shot. 46-42, good screen. Galati's got a little mid-range. That won't go. Quirk on the run out. 
Crossover at the middle, now goes Coast, hands off. Sharp wasn't ready for it, went off, ripping. Yeah, uh, Bellotti maybe, I wasn't sure who hit that out of bounds, but like you said, it's off the ripping. Steffes will come in, Tooney will come in, and DeVolk and Mahone will come out in a timeout. DeVolk doing a great job with two fouls, playing as aggressive as he is and staying clean. 30-second timeout, 46-44. Just uh, defensively, a pretty uh, fantastic game we're seeing. Yeah, and it takes so much more energy on that end of the court, on the defensive end of the court, than on the offensive end. So that's why both teams have gone deep on their bench, in their bench, I should say. 46-42, Rams leading the Red Hawks. Once again, uh, right now, as of going into today, Cornell College, five and one in conference, leading the way. Ripon with six and two. Illinois College, five and three. Lake Forest, six and four. Grinnell, five and four. Lawrence, four and four. Very, very tightly punched top six teams in the conference. Inbounds at the top is Quirk. The work to the left edge. And a foul call underneath. Tightening up the game. Uh, interesting. Coaches tried different players on uh, Kabbalah, on Kabbalah, and now he's got Steffes, his best defender, on him. And the inbounds. Anyani finds Quirk and good. Beautiful back screen on the inbounds. Easy deuce. 48, 44, 7, 31 remaining. Two possession lead in this game is a. It's pretty sizable lead. Biggest lead we've seen is eight. And now this time, Christensen's gonna get called for the foul as Meinholz came through. Meinholz has a gift to uh, dribble penetrate and break down a defense. This time rewarded with the foul. Galati will do the inbounds for the Hawks at the baseline. Quickly find Meinholz and one. Well, how interesting with all this battling on defense, and then two back-to-back -back inbounds plays under the respective hoops, they get the, they get the basket, the easy basket. 48-46, 7-20 remaining, a chance to bring it within one. Free throw is good. The Rams will walk it up the court. And they'll work to the edge. Quirk with it. Jorgensen working against Magnani. They'll work on the outside. Well, it's got Jorgensen. Kamala the working in there. They'll pick him. Boy, Jorgensen caught it in the chops, too. Steffes will run it down. He was going with Galati. Now they'll wait for the trailer in Meinholz. Yeah, he lost the handle. Going hard to the rack, and he'll go for the contact and gets it. I could think of him doing that at least three times in the game. Opportunity to tie and or take the lead. Steph is a 78% free throw shooter. That one is good. To tie the ball game at 48 with 6.49 remaining. This time, Steffes will step up. Release, that's good. 49-48, and Magnani will walk it across the timeline. Jorgensen at the wheel with him. Brought up help on it. A little bit of reverse on the defense there. Shot on the way, Christensen, that'll no good. Oh, Rebound comes out, Tooney picked it. Yeah, because the offensive board was there. Great job by Tooney. Galati will go on the jump stop back to Tooney. He's at the top of the key. Spin move, kick back out over to the left edge. Tooney with the big hook. He'll set it in. That won't go. Hit the deck. Rebound comes up. Good two-man game there. Couldn't finish it. Magnani on the throw to the right side. Kabbalah picked off. Steffes oh. got a hand on it. Kabbalah will kick back out. Christensen on the reload. What a job by Steffes on that. 49-48. Magnani with the spin through the lane. Blocked that time. And out of bounds. Jorgensen blocked it. It went into... Magnani and out of bounds. Yep, now I thought he knocked it off with Jorgensen, so does the Cornell bench. These refs are now earning their checks. Timeouts taken. 
And the Red Hawks leading 49-48 in this one. These refs are going to chat just a little bit, and Ryan Kane going to have a discussion yeah, with both, the official as well. Both coaches have issues. <laughs> <laughs> with the officials. Yeah. Hey, another big matchup today, not just here at the Wilmore Center in Ripon, but um, uh, Grinnell is at, um, I should say, at Illinois College today. So you got um, a big matchup there with five and four Grinnell College at five and three Illinois College. Illinois College playing the spoiler, having beat both of these teams right. now, and uh, within a week's time, and uh, and with Illinois College going to have basically, if you take last Saturday through the 15th of February, I mentioned this earlier, they got that's an eight games stretch, and in those eight games, seven of those are home yeah and uh, what a nice advantage to have it'll remain to see if Illinois College takes full advantage of that home cooking both teams have shot 18 three-pointers four of 18 for the Red Hawks seven of 18 for Cornell you know the other thing with the exception of uh, Knox and Monmouth College Jacksonville Illinois it's an island, and it makes for a long drive. Not yep. only have you go, you have to go into their place and play, you're coming off of uh, lengthy road trips. Yeah, correct. All right, on the floor is going to be Luke Meinholz. He'll get it into Dominic Galati. DeVolk, Steffes, and Jorgensen rounding out the five on the floor for Rippin right now. Pagnani, Kabala, Sharp. There, there's that looking for the double. Christensen and Boji in there. DeVolk over the top and got it to go. 11 points. Check that, 12 points now. The Kimberly grad has had himself a great game so far. Leading score for the Red Hawks, Steffes with 13. It's been quiet, but it's been there. Left edge. Kamala again. This will time will throw back out. Yeah, Steffes, great defense. Under 10 on the shot clock. Sharp going to post up against DeVolk. Good muscle job there. Weak side box out by Jorgensen. Yep. 51-48. Rippon would like a shot and a basket here, I think. Yeah, a good look. You want a good look. DeVolk will get a little shoulder. Uh-oh. A little bit too much on that one from yeah. DeVolk. The key there is taking that first dribble and picking up. You don't want to take that dribble. Pivot, but save, keep your powder dry, save that dribble, and then assess. If you can't go up, you can dribble out of the pressure. Christensen will sit down. Meeker will come back in. Cornell trailing 48-51 with 4.50 remaining in this ballgame. In the back of this game, we'll have Ripping College women's basketball versus Cornell as well. Another battle, both teams with only one conference loss. Magnani comes through, he gets picked. Meinholz will come away with it. Well, no harm, no foul on the turnover. Galati over to Steffes. Steffes will go for the contact again, put it up, and get it. That's strength. That is just flat out strength. Five point lead for the Red Hawks, their biggest lead of the ball game. Meeker on the close, working. Galati. Boji comes through the lane, throws over. Almost a walk. Finds Sharp. He'll go down low and almost picked off, and now they'll get the basket and one. That'll be the third on DeVault. Meinholz helped him momentarily and then had to go help and recover on his own man. And Mahone's going to come back in. So is Tooney. Jorgensen and DeVault will sit. Well, DeVault doing a good job. Picking up his third at this stage of the game. Chance to make this once again a... Free throw is good from Sharp, 51-53 yeah. in one possession game. Whew. And I didn't even pay to get in here. Under four minutes to go here in this one. Meinholz. On the edge, looking for Steffes. Tooney. No, they're doubling that post. Yeah. Meinholz will come through, say, I'll take that. 
you want to hammer down there all the time, I'll come right through the middle of the lane, no problem. 55-51. Marquette University High School grad. 40 minutes from Oconomowoc to school every day. Shot on the way. Whoa. Red Hawks missed on the defense there just a little bit. Yeah, great high-low pass. Rippin fell asleep. Galati over to Tooney. Meinholz will go right side. Finish with the left, no good. Tried to scoop. Meeker in the closeout, he'll get fouled. Good foul. I would say yes. Yep. You want to you want to make sure you don't give him the three-point opportunity. So that's going to be on Steffes. And Meeker will go to the free throw line. Kabala talking to the head coach. I'd listen to him if I was the coach. <laughs> Senior shows why he averages, I don't know, what you say, 15 a game? Yeah. But there's a lot. Meinholz and Galani will come in. DeVolk and Jorgensen back in for the Hawks. That one's good. And a timeout, full timeout taken. Yeah, making their free throws down the stretch, Jason. It is to, big. Uh, make it a one-point game. Three minutes and change. I don't know. We we uh, Steffes has made his living realizing he can't hit from the perimeter by uh, attacking the rim and getting to the free throw line. Jorgensen has tried some mid-range jumpers that hasn't worked for him either. And um, I think that the, the guy that's impressed me the best because they got so much good size in their health defense with their, with Cornell is Ben DeVolk. I've yeah. said it a few times that he's his help uh, keeping some missed shots on both ends alive with tip balls and getting it out to teammates, attacking the rim at times, scoring, and then walling up defensively on, on uh, Sharp in particular, doing a good job. Cornell doing a great job down the stretch of, of finding some fractures against that defense for Rippon and getting some high percentage shots and then making, like I just commented, some free throws down the stretch. So here we go. Cooper Kabala, leading scorer amongst both teams, 21 points, and then Ryan Steffeth with 16 for the Hawks. What Steffeth got at the free throw line? You got that stat? Well, I can tell you the entire team is 11 of 11, but Steffeth is 6 of 6. Okay, there you go. That's where his offensive contributions are coming. Now, at this stage, last Sunday, Mahone, even though it was they came up with sh just short at Illinois College, he got hot. Nice feed. Feed inside. Steffes ran out of room. That time got a hand on it. Ball comes around. DeVolk will run away with it. Good job by DeVolk. 14 on the shot clock. Jorgensen will go left over to Mahone. Mahone comes through, loses, keeps the dribble going. Ball comes out. Now ball on the ground. Lost it. He better get up, get back. 55-54, three-pointer is good for Cornell's Logan Christensen, and a three is in the air. 57-55, Rams lead by two, 224. Steffes with the dribble, finds DeVolk. Hand back to Mahone at the top, he'll lose the dribble just a second. And now Jorgensen. Around the perimeter, they'll work. Eight on the shot clock. Steffes on the fade. Gets it. New Holstein product. Big basket to tie. 57 apiece. Minute 54 remaining. Magnani finding Sharp. Inside to Sharp. He'll work against David Duvall. Body up. DeVault not given much at all. No, and he went up straight with his arms. That was key on the contact. Sharp looking for the foul, but not going to get it. Boy. I think he's going to try to plead his case a little bit, but I'm going to disagree with him because before DeVault kind of got him at the top, Sharp had an elbow into him at the chest. Yeah, well, he's, so. been, he's been doing that, and, there, and the officials feel that he hasn't extended it enough to warrant the whistle. Right. So if I'm if I'm sharp, I'll keep doing it. You're and you're right. Um, but for those, here we are with uh, what 91 seconds left in this game in regulation. Uh, for those that love the nervousness of sports and competition, this is it right here. Right. The nervousness of the game, the the natural high by the players. Let me tell you, how exciting for them. 
And, uh, rip and, if, and if you're a parent, Jason, of the players, <laughs> let me tell you, there's probably about four moms outside in the lobby right now. And maybe a couple dads, too, for that matter. Or they, you'll see a lot of times they put their faces down. <laughs> You can generally pick out the parents in, right. in basketball games in tense moments. So assistant coach Ty Ketz uh, working that official pretty hard near the scorer's table during that timeout as Coach Kane was given the, the X's and O's. Ty was doing yeah. his best to uh -huh. get whatever he could in, in, in the good graces of that official, I think. Ty, a heck of a player in his day. A great explosive first step, Ty Ketz. Tied at 57. 91 seconds remaining here. Mahone will look the inbound and find Steffes into the backcourt. Tooney gets the screen from Jorgensen. There's Steffes wide open for a three. That comes up short. Ball goes out of bounds off of Rippin. Tooney hit it. He was hoping that uh, Kabbalah was going to touch it after he did. In the eyes of the official, he did not. And what do we got? Got with 119 on the. What it was. <laughs> what is this? Uh, score clock? Is he saying that he wants another second back on the game clock? It's at 118. They made it 119. There you go. And then they put an extra second on it. So it must have skipped. It had a, a hiccup. Yeah. A little chilly outside. Yeah. Magnani with it. Back out to Christensen up top. Kabbalah. Left handed hook Block. blocked by DeVolk, but he gets his own rebound and gets oh. it to go. Great job by DeVolk. Just a great hustle by Cornell. I'm picking up the loose ball. It's tough for DeVolk. You think you got it taken care of, and then a <laughs> uh, surprise. 59-57, Rams lead by two with a minute to go. Coming off that timeout, by the way, that Rippin took, Coach Kane put in that inbounds play. He picked up a staggered screen here at the 45-degree angle part. I don't know who set that screen. You, you called that play. And uh, he freed what he wanted. He freed Steffes, got the look he wanted, and it was just, uh, just couldn't knock it down. Yeah, Steph is two of seven behind the arc today. And, and he's not the only one struggling offensively. Well, Drew Jorgensen 0 for 6 today. Yeah. And uh, four of those behind and, the, the And uh, I think it starts, to, it starts to work on you sure. ment mentally, you know. And, and if you can find a way to, to shorten your memory and clear it out and start anew, that's the best thing you can do. Jorgensen typically a 45% three-point shooter. Right, yeah. and, and today, and, over. And not only today, like I said, he uh, he's in a funk, and if he could knock down a couple of threes, uh, I think maybe that would that's what a shooter needs, any shooter, good shooter. 59-57, might be able to hear the rally band in the background there playing a little bit. Nice little atmosphere here today at the Wilmore Center. Good crowd. Great crowd. Now, you, what you're seeing on the camera is that side, it's it's a full full house in front of us, yeah. Below us, yeah. Mahone with under a minute to go out there to Volk Tooney, Jorgensen, and Steffes. Tooney? Don't have to, to tell you how important this possession is for oh, the Red Hawks. Right, exactly. 15 on the shot clock. Jorgensen to Steffes. Steffes around the top, back over to Jorgensen. Look down inside to Volk. The Volk has got eight. He'll muscle up, look for it. Got to go with it, right-handed hook, too hard off the glass. Mahone is there to crush it, goes back up, gets blocked. Yeah, he did. And now they'll foul. Clock ran for at least five, five tenths or six tenths of a second afterwards as well. Should be close to 29 or 29.2 on that clock. Wow, down two. Cornell with the ball, up. Up by a basket. Coach Kane's going to take a timeout. So shot clock goes off because it's under 28. Obviously under 30, I should say. Yep. So the game clock's at 28.4. So another timeout taken by Coach Ryan Kane. He 
still has four of them left. Griffin has to go into Cornell later, too. Yeah. And uh, they're done with Illinois College. Red Hawks breaking the huddle, coming back out. Steffes with 17. 25 for Kabbalah now. Griffin still shooting just about 36%. Kabbalah would do the inbounds. Luke Meinholz right in front of him. Over to the edge. Anyani ahead to Kabbalah. Uh oh, and we got a foul. Yep. Jorgensen. Good thing they did because they had Quirk ready to go. Yeah, two on one. So it would have been a quick feed for the for the slam. Tooney will come back in. They'll platoon him in and out with uh, Meinholz, I believe. Got a, got another foul before they can get him to the free throw line. Right. But Cornell right now in the driver's seat with 25 seconds. Two-point lead and the ball. Inbounds. Kamala will find Anyani in the backcourt, and Jorgensen will put a hand on him and get that foul. So now they'll shoot one and one. That's going to be Drew's third personal. And Magnani will go to the free throw line. Free throw on the way from Magnani. He is good. Solid. Seventy-eight percent free throw shooter on the season so far for Jordan. Yep, same as Steffes. And that is good. I'm trying to determine why the shot clock is still on. <laughs> there we go. It's a long night for somebody. Right. And another timeout taken by Cornell this time. Well, if you like rebounding, Rippon has got the edge. 39 to 27. Turnovers even, 10 apiece for this game. Yep. It's basically, yeah, it's come down to shooting. Right. Uh, Rippon, even with home cooking, has not been able to hit shots. Both teams, very good defense. Cornell 24 of 53 right now for 45%. That's good shooting. Yeah. Rip against a defensive ball club. 21 of 59 for 30. 6%, so. Yeah, they were 30 at the half, so very marginal improvement. All right, here we go. Got women's basketball after this. You have first place Rippin taking on second place Cornell. That's a point of reference. Rippin usually a 46% shooting team on the season. Steffes got the dribble in the corner. Rippon trailing gotta by four. Duvall gonna go out. Jorgensen for a three, that won't go. Rebound, Steffes has got one at 10 seconds for a three, that won't go. Another one pulled down and a foul gonna be taken. And that'll do it. And pretty much. Cornell Rams come in here today. And then uh, Really well played game, hotly contested game. Come away with a well deserved win, it would appear, with a four point lead, six seconds remaining, and looking to get more points. Yeah, hard fought though. Oh, yeah. Christensen at the free throw line. That one is up and good. 62 57. Cornell leading Rippon. That one is good as well. Steffes will do the inbounds and find Tooney. Back to Steffes. Steffes quickly across the timeline, loses the dribble, and Kabbalah will run it down. And the Red Hawks will fall here today to the Cornell Rams 63 to 57. What's that mean for Cornell? Oh, they improved to 11 and 5 overall and 6 and 1 in the Midwest Conference as the Hawks fall to 10 and 8. Overall in six and three in the MWC. Marty, final thoughts. Long time since I've seen Rippon with a three-game losing streak. 
the good news, if you're a Red Hawk fan, a lot of basketball to be played. Absolutely. I want to thank our camera operator and executive producer, Riley Eisnagel, for Martin Ernster. I'm Jason Mansmith. The Red Hawks fall 57 63. This has been a presentation of Midwest Conference Television and the Ripping Channel. So long, everybody.